name's Holly. And that's my rooster. And I thought this year I would like to start doing a few vlogs. Mostly for myself. <laughs> for my own personal enjoyment. Really just to document what we're doing on our little property in Mount Neville in Victoria. And <laughs> if someone would tell him that he's on my video, that'd be good. He'd like to go again. I'll go and take a video of him. This is our rooster. He doesn't have a name, actually. Let's call him Mr. Greasy. Mr. Greasy. I thought you called the other one Mr. Greasy. No, the other one's not Mr. Greasy. Now he's not going to perform. <laughs> anyway, um... I just thought we'd do a video, it's a nice time to start today on um, the very shortest day, <laughs> on the shortest day of the year, the winter solstice, which is the 21st of June 2020, so what better day to start than, um, than today, and from here on out, days, <laughs> days are getting longer, and, um, and we're really looking forward to this to the spring and the summer months to come so why not let's start um, with a bit of a farm tour and then it'd be nice to look back on that <laughs> in the warmer months. All right let's go on a tour. So we have 10 hens here with a rooster and we have a mobile home that we move around with portable electric fence and a solar panel at the moment. They're living in here so that they can this because we're actually going to put garden bed all along here. We're going to get rid of all this grass. So they're doing a lot of the work for us there. But they're not laying us any eggs. So we have got some new hens that are just pullets. They're about maybe three or four months old. And they're living in here at the moment. There's about 19 or 20 of them. It's a very small space for them to live in. I know they are going to graduate to that big house very soon but at the moment we just shift them along onto new grass every couple of days and they're, they're doing all right. Oh yeah, uh, this is my family. This is Clara. Hello. <laughs> How old are you Clara? I'm eight. She's eight, she's my little farm girl and this one over here is Gabby who's 11 in a week. Yeah. And, um, and Nathan is behind the camera. This is my garden. This is lettuce and this is broccoli. We had it in um, one of my mummy's soups. And this is a lettuce that just sprouted up by itself. And there's a whole garden of beetroot. Yeah. Beetroot. <laughs> beetroot. Beetroot. And in here we've got um, some asparagus and a whole lot of weeds. So the weeds need to be popped out. But asparagus dies back at this time of the year and then spring um, will reshoot. Um, it's the beautiful spears. These are our ducks, our fertilizing machines for my citrus grove in here. These are our beautiful Toggenberg goats. They're a dairy breed. Uh, we've got this one here is Pixie. We've got Cinders here, and this is Mama over here. This one's Topsy, and she is my milking goat. So I milk her twice a day at about 6:30 in the morning, and again at 6:30 at night. And she gives us about um, a liter each milking, which is plenty enough for our family to have fresh milk all week long. Plus, I'm able to make um, a fair bit of ricotta every week. Uh, and sometimes halloumi. I'm not as good at making halloumi. And I make yogurt, which only I eat. No one else will eat the yogurt. But I like it. It's drizzle of my honey. And so she's a, she's a wonderful asset to our garden and to our farm. Aren't you topsy? That's a good scratch on the chip. This is 
one of the major projects that we did this year, this year, last year, I can't remember, last year, was um, fencing these igloos. So they were really dilapidated, full of blackberries. We were either gonna rip them down and get rid of them or turn them into some productive space. And so we decided on the latter. And so in these three tunnels in particular, I'm growing, um, I've got a row of avocado trees, I've got 15 trees in there, and we grew heaps and heaps of our summer veggies last summer in this tunnel. It's all on drip irrigation that's gravity fed from our tanks up near the shed, and um, we grew pumpkins, loads and loads of tomatoes, um, zucchinis galore, capsicums, chilies, eggplants, all those summer veggies that everyone loves and we have big plans for this year. I'm hoping to grow in another tunnel this year into a second one. We've got three that are fenced ready to go, but I'm, I'm trying to be careful not to bite off more than I can chew. And uh, I'm gonna grow market garden style in there. Lots of veggies over the summer period, summer and autumn. And so watch this space on that. One of the things that we, um, well, that I really wanted to achieve when we moved out here was to have a bit more of a sustainable approach to our meat, um, our meat production. So what we've been able to do for the last four years is have these uh, Wilshire poles. Um, although some of them aren't polled, as you can see, three of them have horns. Uh, these mamas are pregnant at the moment so you can see they're quite they're getting quite big and uh, they've all been mums before so they're already a bit bigger as well we ended up with 10 10 lambs in the freezer and that was able mm. to supply um, that's certainly able to supply our needs for the year for lamb and also supplies a lot of our family and our friends as well with lamb and, nice. uh, and the nice thing about these sheep is that they are um, self-shedding. So we never have to worry about getting a shearer out to shear them. This is the fluff from one of the um, sheep I collected. Um, they're really low maintenance. They take care of themselves very well. We've had very few problems with them health-wise. a wonderful wonderful plant called tagasasti it's a nitrogen fixing plant it's also called tree lucerne really high in protein and it's a great fodder crop for um, for sheep goats alpacas this is jack and blackberry and uh, jack's being a bit more fussy good boy there are alpacas we got them as um, guardian um, animals for our for our sheep when they're lambing they don't really do a great job of that they do sort of seem to bond with the lambs when they're born, but um, you know, sometimes we still lose lambs to foxes, but anyway, they're fun. They're fun to have. They're nice when kids come over, they, they can feed them by hand with the lucerne. That's rude! Did that get on me? Have I got loosened in my hair? Uncool! Good job, boy. Alpacas spit sometimes. Usually not Jack, usually just Blackberry. planted with Nathan's brother and his wife and their boys Chris Corey, Isaac, Luke, Jude and Asher and that was probably four and a half years ago we planted these or maybe even yeah about four and a half years so um, we planted them because there's no 
big firewood trees on our property. And, um, and also for, we wanted to create a bit of space for biodiversity and a bit of a corridor from, from the neighboring bits of um, bushland into our property as well. And um, so these are really fast growing trees. So they started as tube stocks that were about that big four and a half years ago. And look at them. This is where a lot of my hives now live, down at my dam. And we had to move a lot from the house because, um, because of my daughter who is very sadly is anaphylactic, which we found out last year. So we've moved a lot of the hives. I've got rid of some from the property as well. But um, as you can see, they, they've got a really great water source right here at the dam. Which is getting really cool as we've had a fair bit of rain recently and uh, they've got all the bush in the forest all around uh, plus all the gardens from my neighbors over here and the fruit trees look at them even in the rain they are coming and going nice strong hive These goats are possibly one of the biggest assets that we have um, on our farm in terms of the work that they do. They eat blackberries and weeds like there's no tomorrow. And so we tether the goats. We do this for the dairy goats as well, but we tether them along boundaries, along fence lines, areas that we can't get to with a, with a mower or a slasher. And so they, this is Woody here. As you can see, he's really big. Um, and he's a really friendly goat and he's just honestly is a workhorse. What's in my pocket? <laughs> oh the chili! You can smell the chili. You want some leaves? Eating some lettuce. You can smell that, huh? I won't give you the chili. Do you wanna okay, you want that one? Boy, you've been doing a good job around here. You deserve some. You deserve some. So we also have a lot of resident rabbits that live all in this thicket of blackberries. And this is what they do, which is really quite annoying. Uh, they dig holes. And you can imagine when the grass is... Um, growing up over that you can't see the rabbit holes so you know I, there's been many trips and stumbles and falls down the holes it's a real thing um, falling down a rabbit hole and it's happened to me many times I actually lost a croc down a rabbit hole once I was picking blackberries along this boundary and um, I stepped into the bushes a bit further and stepped down into a rabbit hole pulled my foot out the croc got stuck in there and there was no way I was putting my hand in there to get it out. I, I'm not entirely sure that it's only rabbits that live down there. So I wear gum boots now. This stuff is oxalis weeds, but the goats love it. So we'll pick some as a treat for them. I'm going to convert that into amazing milk by this evening. 
weeds turned into milk. You can see we let the goats out in here as a bit of a laneway, you know, grass management, weed management. And you can see how far they can jump up. They jump up, eat all the foliage off these bamboos, and that's as high as they can reach. <laughs> as you can see, they've totally defoliated everything that they can find down below. So back to the backyard, as you can see our house just there. And this is the last thing I want to show you. This is our orchard here, our um, mostly stone fruits, deciduous trees. So we've got um, apples, pears, we've got a quince tree, we've got plums, nectarines, cherries, apricots, peaches. There's a, some blueberries, some currants. I think that's it. I think that's all I can think of. Um, it's not the best managed uh, little orchard by any stretch. I don't have any irrigation down here. So when I planted them, I was watering by hand, but that got too much. So some of them are a bit, um, probably a bit stunted, haven't produced very much. They're about four years old, but uh, you know, and the birds get a fair bit of it if you don't net it. But they were the first trees to go in when we moved here, first productive trees, along with our citrus and yeah we might transplant some of them down into the igloos wonderful to be able to grow your own food so that's that's my farm or our farm our hail farm as i like to call it um, and that's really what I'm wanting to document. I'm wanting to document projects and topics that may be of interest to others. And if, um, if some of it's helpful to you, then all the better. So yeah, so I'm gonna try and put out a video every so often. I don't really know um, how frequently at the moment, but as we do different projects or as I'm doing new plantings or, um, or new design, things that are relevant to permaculture, gardening, um, homesteading sort of type um, projects I'll try and do some vlogs of that and um, make some content that hopefully can help others that are interested in the same sort of thing so thank you for watching and happy winter solstice 2020